Oh, hey, hey, what's up, guys? Um, Iggy Films here again. So, you know, to, to, today we're going to be reviewing this amazing movie that I found on Netflix. Um, this movie is called Love, Wedding, Marriage. All right, guys. So, pretty much, Love, Wedding, Marriage um, came out in 2012, directed by Dermot Mulroney. And pretty much... This movie's about a happy, newlywed marriage counselor's views on wedded bliss get thrown for a loop when she finds out her parents are getting a divorce. So, you know, as you can see, it's really interesting, really, really interesting, really unique, and really, like, awesome and interesting, you know? Alright, so pretty much it starts off with random stock music found on the internet, uh, and then a little text saying... Once upon a time, a guy met a girl, and like most men in love, he didn't know what to say. You know, uh, usually, usually the best parts of uh, romantic comedies is seeing the person ask out his crush, and you know, seeing like the awkwardness between the two. You know, that's usually like the highlight of the movie, right? It, this movie just throws that out the window. Um, it pretty much explains it, I guess, in this little uh, text right here, in the beginning of the film, and you don't get to see them build a relationship at all it's just kind of thrown at you all right so right now it's pretty much just showing the 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 groom i guess uh uh practicing his marriage proposal kind of like uh doing that but 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 again it would have been more interesting to to see him actually ask out the the female woman partner in the film but instead we just get an audition tape now that i think about it this movie has such a low budget it, it's probably the audition tape for the movie all right uh for, first up why is this scene filmed like it's uh 50 shades of gray it's 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 the complete opposite she she's getting dressed she's not stripping our wedding day was the happiest day of my life i was marrying the man of my dreams and our happily ever after was about to begin. Charlie and I met once upon a time when I was getting my- That's how you know when you're gonna get great writing in a movie is when uh, they explain their emotions in narration over a scene. He took me to an art fair in San Francisco. The next day he surprised me- Alright, so now this scene is here for character development between the sisters. Okay, and then they hear people arguing outside. The, the, the main character says, Glad that's not my next client. And guess what, guys? Yep, you, you guessed it. It's, it's her next client. So in this scene, she finds out that her parents are getting a divorce. And um, this kind of sets up like the main conflict in this great grand story. Okay, I I'm sorry, but for first of all, why would you go to your daughter, even if she is a count marriage counselor? Why would you lay this on her when she's in the middle of working? Like, call her over the phone when she's at home or something. Why, why do you have to go to her job? Like, it's, it's not like you're seeking for help or anything. Like, the characters even state that they're not there for counseling. Why would you go there just to announce that you're getting a divorce to your daughter when she's at work? Nobody does that. They wait for them to come home, and then they give them a call. Or, if you want, you could go to their house when they're home, and you can be like, uh, daughter, we're getting a divorce uh, because you're a piece of shit father. Uh, you know, slept with another woman 90 years ago. And just now told me about it. And then it's it's revealed that um, a big problem that they have is that they, they, they have a party planned for the 30th year anniversary of the marriage of their parents. And um, pretty much it's, it's all going to shit now that they're getting a divorce. And uh, that's kind of a problem now. So we're going to see what the main character is going to do, guys. Wow. She's so sad. She's eating ice cream and 
putting extra. What the fuck is the point of this? Like, I, I can't, I can't fucking watch this movie anymore. I saw, I've seen this movie three times. I don't know how long I can last. Like, why would somebody make such a thing? It's so bland and generic. What's the point of wasting your time and energy on this? All right, and then what happens is the, the daughter leaves her husband home alone and doesn't give him sex. And then she goes to her mom and dad's house to, or, or her mom, fuck, who fucking cares? Her mom's at her sister's house. She goes there, is like, oh, I know a great therapist. And then she goes to her dad's house and does the same thing. And there's like a kid there that's like there to deliver food that plays into the story later. It's so boring. What is the point of watching this movie? This was so sweet of you. It was, wasn't it? Okay. Wow, wow, really interesting. Wow. Okay, and then this happens. The, their alcoholic best friend, or, or the best friend, I don't even think he's a best friend. Like, the, the, the character, like, the husband character says he doesn't even like him. So, like, why are you hanging out with him? But anyways, they're on a date with their alcoholic best friend's new Polish girlfriend that doesn't even speak English. And then, the, the, then, then what happens is the retarded best friend has to bring up the first wife of the husband. First of all, why would you mention this at a dinner table? Also, why wouldn't you tell your wife, like, I was drunk in Vegas and I almost got married? It's not even that bad. You were drunk. Okay, so after this, they go to they go to couples therapy where they have like the most annoying extras I've ever seen. And then they they do this rock climbing thing and the mom is literally like three feet above the ground, right? And then she falls off of the mountain and she's still hanging like two feet above the ground. And then, of course, the, the retarded wife, this white bitch, has to let go of her husband, who's like 30 feet above the ground, to run over to her mom, who's two feet above the ground, just to help her up? What? <laughs> yep, just, just, just whoops. Okay, and then... And then after this... They find out that the mom wants to go to Thailand, and, and there's like no hope for this whole 30th year anniversary party. So just cancel it. Why are you trying so hard? Maybe your parents would be better off like separately. Have you, haven't you ever thought of that? Don't you want your mom to be happy? Asshole. Then it cuts to horrible close-up shots of the main actress talking to a therapist that's not even in the same room. And they probably just paid someone to just like use a microphone and then like dub in their voice. Is this supposed to be artistic or something? Anyways, then the father finds out that, oh, you know, my wife's leaving. It, it, it's all over, you know, it, it's it's too bad. The, the alcoholic best friend and the wife's or the main character's husband, they decide to take James Brolin out for a drink. And it's the, like the best thing ever. The best thing in this whole movie, hands down, is James Brolin getting wasted at a bar and just hooking up with some random girl that he finds. And then, of course, you know, the main character has to have his mom home. And then James Brolin comes home, super wasted, starts saying like a bunch of stuff like oh there's gonna be russian jews that like f me and then the mom's like oh i i was i was right about this you i was right about you i sh i would be so much happier without you okay so pretty much after that the 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 main character fights with her husband and then one scene later they they forget about it all right so after that what the character decides to do she decides to to throw away all the sleeping pills, only give three to her dad, and then she calls the hospital saying, Oh, my dad overdosed, I think. I found the sleeping pill bottle empty, and he's really asleep. So the hospital comes, and then the mom is worried, goes to the hospital. She answers the phone all dramatically, like, Stop right there. Oh my god. Oh my god. Stop right there. 
like every fucking romantic comedy. <laughs> And then the husband and the, like, the wife argue. How dare you think you can just manipulate people to get your way? I'm sorry, but I did it for my parents. No, you didn't do it for them. You did it for yourself. I was only trying to help. Charlie, where are you going? I can't believe this is who you are. <laughs> okay, then after that, pretty much what happens, they get back together, and it's revealed that the delivery boy from earlier in the film is actually the secret son from the affair that James Brolin had 90 years ago. And yeah, cool, plot twist. Oh, and then the main character and her husband are angry. And then they have the 30th party anniversary. What the fuck? Wow, just... Uh, wow, just... What an, what an awful way to end such a shitty movie. What is the point of wasting your time and energy and the studio's money to make such a mediocre film that isn't even original in any way? Only redeeming quality I can find in this movie is James Brolin's performance because he clearly is having the time of his life. Everyone else just doesn't care. But uh, yeah, guys, that, that, that's, that's it for the video. Don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe for more content, and I will see you guys later.